Golden Rule Radio is brought to you by McIlvaney ICA. ICA has been America's foremost precious metals brokerage firm since 1972, helping you build a strategic precious metals portfolio. Call 800-525-9556 to buy gold, silver, platinum, or palladium today, or go to McIlvaney.com. Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, Gold This Week, sitting at a healthy 1753, but there might have been a couple additional things between last week's show and today that would make that price look a little bit different. So we'll certainly get into gold's action over the last week. And silver. Exactly. And silver, sitting at about 2356 at this time of recording with a little bit different price yesterday than we're at today. So we'll dive into that as well. Platinum, like gold and silver, also took a bit of a dive earlier this week, but has rebounded back up to 1,016 off some very healthy Fibonacci levels when we'll dig into that chart in a moment. And you would think with all the action in the precious metals, you'd see the dollar just skyrocketing. Such has not been the case. The dollar currently sitting at about 92.90, with the Dow continuing to put in what looks like one top after another, although did break into higher pricing today, up to around 35.5. So where would you guys like to start today? I think we should start with things that are very zoomed in, as in the week-to-week or day-to-day action, and then zoom out a little bit and look at the history, because we are coming up on the 50th anniversary of when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard right here this coming few days, August 15th, 1971. Here we are 50 years later. I like numbers when they work out to interesting patterns. We can look in the charts, which we will. But one thing I want to point out here with gold at 1750, if you go back to when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard at 35 bucks an ounce, here we are 50 years later. So 35 times 50 is 1750. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Think about that too. $35. $35 were equal in purchasing power to one ounce of gold. Now it takes $1,750 to equal one ounce of gold. That's a loss of purchasing power. And that goes to your point. And that is cool numbers. And Miles, I know that last week we recorded right before the Friday downturn and certainly before the Sunday night Asian flash crash and the Monday downturn in the U.S. markets. That's a lot of activity, but you love numbers. And why don't you show us where that bounce occurred? Yeah, I don't know if I'm quite the count from Sesame Street, but I am kind of a fan of uh, not so much the numbers or necessarily the numbers, but the patterns that they adhere to. And the numbers just kind of tell us where those patterns line up. So looking at the gold price, we talked about this little short-term double bottom back in March and April, going back a few shows ago. A couple months ago, back to March and April, we had this RSI declining divergence, which we expected to see a reversal back up. We did see that gold going from that magical 1678 number, which was the only thing I talked about for six months until it happened, and then coming back up over 1900. The important thing is, is that during this retracement phase, which kicked off last summer, last summer we got up to 2100 in gold. We had this long bull market, taking the price up from around 12, 1300 back in like 2016, all the way up to 2100. It made sense to have this little brief retracement, which has thus far and continues to be incredibly shallow. When you look at the grand scheme of this bull market in gold, the step back that we've had has been all but nothing. So like Robert said, you start small, you zoom out to the macro. Well, if you start macro, if you start big, looks like a blip on a radar and that's about it. But we have come back down to this 382 fib. That's what happened here earlier this week. We came back to that 1678 number, but lo and behold, anytime you have a very specific floor in a market, you know there are gonna be standing orders at that price, causing gold to turn around and jump right back up. So as of yet, we've still yet to put in a higher high and a higher low in gold. And one thing I've been saying for the last couple months here is the bear market will continue until morale improves, or at least until it's proven otherwise. So we are in a very short-term bear market or a retracement phase of a bull market cycle. You know, you look at some other 
technical analysts out there. They would use phrases like A wave, B wave, C wave, D wave, and arguably we're in a long-term B wave move back down, which generally is followed by a C wave, which is a pretty explosive move up and then a big D wave retracement back down. And that seems to have been the pattern in gold since uh, 1972, and will probably continue both on the macro scale over the last 50 years, like Robert brought up, as well as in the micro scale just over the course of weeks and months. So I wouldn't spend too much time looking at individual day-to-day -day pricing. You have to look at the whole forest. Each tree is important, but it's just a piece of the whole. Robert, I'm glad you pointed that out. I mean, that to go macro is huge. And it also shows, from a macro standpoint, the destruction of the dollar. Really, that's what it's about. Let's dissect what occurred here in the last week since our last show. Walk us through a little bit. What are your feelings, thoughts, just perceptions or observations with the Friday, Sunday, Monday price movement? And then, you know, here recording on Wednesday, what's occurred since then? Can you kind of walk us through what you think? Yeah, the Friday sell-off, I think, was viewed over the weekend and come open of the Asian markets. I think there was just an accelerated downside move. I would think that if it was going to have that volatility to the downside, you might actually break support, but you didn't. The intraday low on gold Sunday night, Monday morning stopped just above the previous two lows that we've had. On the flip side of that with the dollar index, the dollar index just here recently, I think today, pushed to an intraday high just slightly above the previous high. Now, try not to overanalyze it, but you analyze things and you look for little clues like that, and gold is so far holding above those previous lows. The dollar had a pinprick just above the previous high. I don't know that that means a whole lot with the dollar index. I think ultimately the dollar index is headed lower, like we've talked about so much on this show. But the fact that gold held above the lows and silver held above those lows intraday on such a violent move down and then retraced right back up, here we are back at 1750, I equate it to looking for things that you want to own, like buying a winter coat. When do you want to buy it? You want to buy it in the spring when it goes on sale. Buying a new grill. You want to buy a new grill in the fall after the summer grilling season's over. Here we are, if you like gold, if you bought gold above 1750 in the last few months, why would you not buy it here at 1750? It's on sale. So are you saying, Robert, that over the last, let's say, six, seven, eight years, it's almost like there's been a season that gold goes down and a season that gold goes up? It's almost like at a certain point in the year, gold tends to put in bottoms, and at a certain point in the year, gold tends to put in tops? Well, finishing our softball season this year, I think you're handing me an underhand soft toss? <laughs> Is that what you're so asking about? I, because, do know, I, I mean, do know you're a fan of that pattern. <laughs> Here we are in August. Uh, you know, August typically can be a strong month for gold. Then you go right into September. September is a strong month for gold. So with gold being on sale here today, I don't think that I would be waiting because you do have some seasonal patterns, seasonal strengths to gold coming here in the next six weeks, eight weeks. When you look at that larger trend that you've been talking about, the longer we're in a long-term bull market in gold, we're having a shorter term retracement, a short-term bear market. Well, where does that stop? You've talked about on the long-term pattern, we've had somewhat of a shallow correction. Well, think about what's going on in the world. All the fundamentals that I'm sure Tori wants to jump into, <laughs> all the fundamentals that should be pushing gold higher. Is this shallow correction an indication of all the fundamentals that are in place? I could easily see this shallow correction being all the correction we're going to get because of the fundamentals in place. Like gold shouldn't be going down in an environment where you have inflation going way up. So perhaps we are in the shallow correction on a long-term basis and we're ready to go higher. It's very likely that those fundamentals are going to take over and push gold higher and we won't see more of a correction from where we are. To your point, too. No, I, that's wonderful. You may not even be awake. Here we've got 1750. What happened in the Asian market was the crash right down to that support level. Well, well what we have not mentioned is the subsequent bounce in the short term. Immediately, there was a 3.8% reversal in gold. Immediately, there was a 7.1% reversal in silver. Huge money jumped into the metals at those prices. So there's big money supporting what you're directing the listener to do. On top of that, you may not be awake when you see your price point. 
don't try to ring the bell. Don't get too greedy. Just get in when there's a good opportunity because, again, you were either in the middle of dinner or the middle of your sleep when all that price action was occurring. Fundamentals underlying, yeah, the dollar, a little bit of a high. That was a three-week high in the U.S. dollar. And a still three- lower than the previous highs. Yes, mm-hmm. and that's exactly. the dollar index, right? It was a four-month high of the dollar against the euro, though. That's what I think was a little more significant. Because the euro and the European Central Bank are going to start playing some of the same games. People are asking, okay, really, though, what started happening Friday? The primary answer is jobs report, right? Yeah. So we get this positive jobs report. We mentioned in last week's recording the service sector numbers that have come out for July up 64%. So that non-farm payroll jobs report that came out Friday was the initial trigger. Robert, you had a great theory, too, in our staff meeting just in terms of people jumping on and selling there because that was an opportunity and then you see the reversal of the big money but yeah you are seeing little blips on the radar as you said what are some other bullish fundamentals though we still have weak treasury yields we have a negative real rate of return the dollar is still relatively weak and losing purchasing power How about this big reversal being driven by like a trillion dollar stimulus package in the infrastructure world? So those are the things that we want you to keep your focus on over the macro and look at these opportunities as just that price opportunity. So I know we've talked a lot about the gold. What happened at the same time as silver dropped disproportionately, the ratio went to 75. You want to walk us through the silver charts, Miles? Yeah, absolutely. But just like gold, silver failed to put in a lower price and turned around and rebounded. Now, silver hasn't had the same type of charting rebound that gold has. Silver's rebound has been a little bit weaker. But realistically, and I've said this for months, silver never created a new low. We had our low back in August, September last year. We had a higher low end of the year 2020. We finally come down and here now at the beginning of August, we put in another low, but we're still staying above $22 and silver's never put in the lower low, not in the last nine months. Nine months since November. This is your best chance to buy silver in nine months. The whole time that gold has been in this retracement phase, silver has continued to put in higher highs and higher lows. So we're on the low end of that. That does not mean it's going to continue. Silver certainly could put in some form of retracement. But as Robert was pointing out, if it's going to happen in August or September, that's going to be the first time in 10 years that has happened, maybe longer. So it's not a common occurrence that when you get into harvest and the Indian wedding season and a number of things that take place this time of year, that the investment rate of precious metals decreases over the next few months. It's very likely you could be seeing the bottom in some of these charts, which kind of scares me as far as silver goes, because silver has been so strong even during a retracement phase. Yeah, jumping to platinum, it has sold off like gold and silver, but it also has a nice little Fibonacci number that it hit, the 50% retracement line, right at 967. And it's up for the last couple of days. Have to note that the down transports are actually also up and moving higher. That's probably on the stimulus bill and the funding there for the infrastructure. So platinum's reacting similarly as the transports and moving higher with other industrial metals. And with all the increasing COVID fears and shutdown fears, we're at a very crucial point with the equity markets, the industrials, how the transports have failed to go to new highs as the S&P 500 and the industrials have gone to new highs, NASDAQ's holding just below the all-time high. But the transports have lagged and may be showing weakness in the economy. We shall see the stock market trading sideways and slightly up. There is some increasing fears that we're going into another type of lockdown with the economy. Yeah, Robert, I'm glad you pointed this out. I think I mentioned this on last week's show. Uh, I can't remember for sure, but we did have the transports and the industrials pretty much in lockstep for the last year. But as of June this year, we did have kind of our first major divergence between the two. Both came down into June. The industrials turned up. The transports did not. The transports continued down. Now, they're both up over the last day or two, but more important to me is just the trend over the last six weeks. And the trend over the last six weeks is money's going into the industrials, not into the transports, which makes me wonder, 
who's putting the money into the market, and I think we know the answer to that. I think you just mentioned it a second ago. Sounds like there's at the low interest rate borrowing that the banking industry can do from the Fed, money can get flooded into the industrials to keep people's 401ks afloat when they see crisis. Yeah, primary benefactor of low interest rates right now is the federal government. They don't care about spending and borrowing. There's no debt ceiling. So for them to pass this infrastructure spending bill before the debt ceiling gets put back into place is critical. That's why it was bipartisan. Then you have low interest rates. It saves them so much money over the long term to borrow now while the interest rates are low. And you can sit there and talk about Fed tapering. That's another primary motivating reason that the metal supposedly turned down is that it gives the Federal Reserve an opportunity to begin discussing, not doing, but discussing in September a tapering of mortgage-backed security and bond buying. And all of that to be said, it's not a change of course. At the same time, you've got our own Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, screaming to Congress to raise the debt ceiling and to pass bipartisan legislation to not make it an issue in the coming extended period of time. So $28.625 trillion in debt and counting, debt to GDP at 128%. And again, this is an opportunity, and, and watching the ratios as well, the whole time you're holding metals in uncertain times like these, we also have the opportunity to compound your ounces. It can be a growth type of an investment. And whether this is a B-wave decline that we just saw the bottom of, that would be great because the C wave climbs in that Dow theory are the biggest climbs. Put your seatbelt on when we finally get that climb. We're below the 65 week moving average, which is 1833 on gold. We're below the 200 day moving average, which is 1820 on gold. Those are key because you'll always come back and touch the moving average line. So you buy when you're below it and you proceed with caution when you way exceed it. <laughs> so. Again, buying opportunities here. Do not be discouraged. Be encouraged. Be prudent and take measures. Speaking of taking measures, not tape measures like you measure things, taking measures, taking action. We talk about ratios all the time. Well, right now you're at a 20 to 1 gold ounces to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. 20 ounces of gold to buy one share of the Dow. And so in terms of taking action, taking measures, the Dow gold ratio has only been higher than 20 to 1 in a short amount of time compared to the long history of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I don't have the statistics in front of me. You can look up a long-term Dow gold ratio chart and see 20 to 1 is pretty high. And so we're going to argue that you're going to see a lower Dow gold ratio. And when the last gold bull market in the 70s ended, that ratio was at one to one. One ounce of gold bought one share of the Dow. Today, it takes 20 ounces of gold to buy one share of the Dow. So what's on sale? I'd say gold. So in terms of taking measures into your own hands, taking action, I think you would wanna have more gold than stocks today. A lot of people in their portfolios don't hardly own any gold, but having at least some, but I would argue you would want more in this environment then you're going to look to scale back and take other measures when that Dow Gold ratio gets down 5 to 1, 3 to 1, 2 to 1. I think we're going to see it. What creates a 3 to 1 ratio on the Dow Gold ratio? Well, if current Dow is 35,000, what does that take? 12,000 roughly on gold? It's not out of the question, especially with inflation coming. If the Dow were to come and have a correction, if the economy slows, the world shuts down again, Dow sells off, let's say it goes to 20,000. Well, you only need a $7,000 price tag on gold to have a three to one ratio. Those ratios are what matters. The gold silver ratio, we can help you with that. Dow gold ratio is a big one. That's a zoomed out picture. That is where you want to be looking for opportunity in gold to increase your footprint over somewhere else. That ratio is gonna matter. We're gonna keep talking about it here on the show because we are gonna mark today at 20 to one Dow gold ratio. I'd be willing to bet in the next few years, we're going to see a lot lower ratio there. So that tells you, taking measures into your own hands, you want to own more gold today than you would stocks. So those ratios are really what matters. One thing against another, not just a price tag on it. That's going to do it this week for Golden Rule Radio. If you liked what you heard, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. You can find us on Twitter at ICA Gold on Facebook at McIlvaney Financial, or on our website, McIlvaney.com. If you'd like to discuss your personal portfolio, you can call one of the advisors at McIlvaney ICA at 
525-9556. Thanks for listening and have a great week.